even then, I know a lot of people are like, Lucas, you're not playing it right. Lucas, you're not, you're supposed to grapple. Lucas, you can do, 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 do. All right, so you could be in the middle of a boss fight. You're like, you got in the boss fight. This, his half, his life is halfway down. You're like, okay, I, how about we save it here? Saving it right now would be a good time for me, the player. Can you get a save here, bro? Can we get a save here? Where's everyone? What they what? What? <laughs> Lord, 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 Lord. And when it comes to the story, this is the only saving grace is the story. The reason why I think the story is so great, and it's great from an Xbox user's perspective, because what this story is, it's a gay love story. So it's a beautiful love story in that concept is that Master Chief is finally coming out and he's relaying his, you know, his homosexual desires with Esperanza. I think that's great. Ooh. Oh my goodness. What's up gamers? I hope you guys are all having a great day today, just full of positivity and happiness, dude. Because we're gonna be looking at probably the second worst Halo Infinite review I think I've ever seen. Like this is only second to the review that we already checked out on the channel, where the person reviewing the game literally did not even download the game yet and said he had no intention of doing so, but went ahead and published a review of it anyway. But for the multiplayer alone, being pumped as people are, I still, <laughs> <laughs> I am absolutely flabbergasted. I've been discussing with myself, do I install this game just for the views? But, I mean, if I want to play a PlayStation 2 game, I'm going to install a PlayStation 2 game. <laughs> but yeah, aside from that video, this is definitely a close second, bro. Like, this review, I think you guys are really going to enjoy it. I mean, I guess we could call it probably the worst actual review of Halo Infinite on YouTube because, oh my god, man, this shit is really bad. Just here's a little sneak peek. The reason why I think this story is so great, and it's great from an Xbox user's perspective, because what this story is... It's a gay love story. But yeah, that should kind of give you a good idea of what we really have in store for us here. We already know this is going to be some top tier quality content. So I don't really think we need much of an introduction when it comes to this video. I think you guys probably have a pretty good idea of what we can expect here. So without further ado, guys, go ahead and sit back, relax, grab a drink, grab some popcorn, and let's go ahead and play this shit. Oh my goodness. So many of you guys may be well aware that I just happened to finish Halo Infinite a few days ago. And I figured, you know, I needed some time, okay? I needed some time. So we watched the last part of his Halo Infinite stream on my stream where he was struggling to beat the final boss. And yeah, he definitely needed some time, bro. Like he'll show it a little bit later on in this video, but he had a legitimate mental breakdown during and after the final boss fight because he kept dying so many times. For all the gameplay to really just, to really sit to sit, sit with this gameplay and understand my true feelings regarding Halo Infinite. I'm just throwing it out there. I think that part about him saying it was a gay love story kind of really spoke to him. Fuck everyone who had it. Fuck the art team, fuck the animation team, fuck the character animation team, fuck the sandbox animation team. <laughs> and yeah, he literally did that through the entire credit sequence. After some time of pondering and pensive thought, I began to have an epiphany. That's what happened. I had an epiphany, okay? Yo, be careful, man. Don't think too hard. Kind of like, I would say, Mary, where an angel came down to me and was like, Lucas, Lucas. Bro, this dude literally made the angel hold a PlayStation 5 controller. Are you fucking kidding me? It's an Xbox game, Lucas. And at that second, I realized, you're right. Thank you, Angel. Thank you, Angel. Now, the Angel had a PS5 controller in their hand, so I, I knew it was an Angel. Oh shit, man. Did the amazing Lucas forget to take his normal pills again? Like, this dude is obviously hallucinating because he's seeing a female PlayStation fanboy who wants to talk to him, bro. Everybody knows that gamers don't get no pussy, bro. Maybe one day, but for now, in the words of our Lord and Savior Dreamcast guy, we're just gonna have to... Keep dreaming. Because demons have Xbox controllers when they visit you. I don't know, man. That angel's pretty nice, but that demon looking hella thick. Regardless, I began to realize, ah... I've been looking at this game 
from a PS5 perspective, right? Oh shit, did it have too much gameplay for you? We know the PlayStation fanboys don't really enjoy playing games, they'd rather watch them. Quality, great story. Yeah, maybe great at helping me fall asleep, but the one silver lining is, is you can at least get through Sony games in half the time if you just skip all the cutscenes. That shit was really helpful in Ratchet and Clank. Even though that game was only like five hours long, it was miserable to sit through. So anything I could do to cut down on the time I spent in the game was much appreciated. Great, amazing gameplay. Replayability, right? All this value that I've been looking from the lens at this PS5 game. Let me guess, as a PlayStation 5 game, this game gets a 2 out of 10, too much gameplay, not enough dialogue. Now, as an Xbox game, it's amazing. That's, that's what I came to realize. As an Xbox game, this game, Halo Infinite, is amazing. And on PC, where I have access to PlayStation and Xbox games, I would also agree, the game's pretty damn good. Much better than any of the PlayStation games on PC, that's for fucking sure. Although God of War might change that. Now, as a PS5 game, this game is utter dog sh**. Let me guess, it is too much gameplay. I mean, let's take for example, the gameplay. <laughs> the gameplay? What gameplay? That feeling when you only recognize gameplay is walking in a straight fucking line listening to dialogue. <laughs> the gameplay? What gameplay? Uh, you know what? The best way to describe the gameplay in Halo Infinite is probably uh, the average Xbox user's life, okay? Just another reminder that this is unironically a grown-ass man simping for a piece of fucking plastic. I swear to God, dude, I will never understand this console wars bullshit in 2022. Like, holy shit, man, let this shit die already. Actually, wait, on second thought, don't, because then I can't milk it anymore. Unimpressive and repetitive. And a fucking PlayStation game isn't? Holy shit. You better not like fucking Uncharted, The Last of Us, Days Gone, Horizon Zero Dawn, Spider-Man, Ratchet and Clank. Like, all of these games have repetitive-ass gameplay. Like, Ratchet and Clank, for example, you literally fight the same fucking boss like 20 times throughout the game. But yeah, dude, Halo Infinite is repetitive. That is how this gameplay is. I'm telling you, there is no sense of progress in this game whatsoever that's because it's not an rpg it's a first person shooter you fucking dumbass right halo chief or master chief whatever his name is master chief in in level one and master chief at the end it feels the same i don't know maybe because you're playing as the same fucking character it feels exactly the same you know what what upgrades? You don't need any upgrades. And that's by design, so the people who don't want to play the game as like an open world side quest simulator can still go through the main campaign missions and have an enjoyable experience. Halo is a first person shooter, not an RPG. That'd be like me getting upset that I can't fucking 360 no scope in The Witcher 3. You can beat this entire great game just by upgrading your grapple hook. I want you to think about this, okay? I breezed through this game for the most part. Put that shit on legendary and see if you breeze through it. And also, you shouldn't have to upgrade your character in order to beat a game. That sounds like good game design, if you ask me. But I don't really understand why it's a problem to breeze through a Halo campaign. They're arcade shooters, not fucking Dark Souls, bro. Until we got to the final boss. Until we got to the final boss. Because the game how it decides, you know what? It's a final boss. How do we make this, you know, fun for the player? I know, let's throw, just throw waves at the player. Dude, imagine complaining about wave-based combat in an arena shooter. Like, this takes me back to that dog shit Doom Eternal review from Upper Echelon. Another exacerbating factor is wave-based combat. Pretty much all of your major encounters are just wave-based combat of the same enemies over and over in a single room. That's not to say that the combat isn't fun, because it is, and despite the fact there is a huge amount of enemy archetype repetition, they still feel just as good to glory kill as ever before. But the sheer number of waves, one after another, of the same enemies just spread out, gets horribly annoying. How do we make this, you know, fun for the player? I know, let's throw, just throw waves at the player. Waves and waves and waves and waves of enemies. Instead of, you know, actually, you know, figuring out a creative process of how to, to make this boss feel compelling, integrated into the story, maybe have some cool mechanics that, they, that, that we've used or had the player develop over time. 
Once again, this is a first person shooter and more specifically a Halo game. That is not what the Halo series has ever been. If you're looking for that type of shit, go play an RPG. But I think it's funny that he's bitching about wave based combat in the boss fight when it was literally like five enemies that kept killing him over and fucking over again and he kept getting salty that he couldn't save in the middle of a boss fight. That's right, because every single video game out there lets you save your progress during the middle of a fucking boss fight so you don't have to restart every time you die. You know, that's a completely heard of concept in video games, right? I mean, shit, look at a game like Dark Souls. You can't even fucking pause that motherfucker. Which, Lucas, if you're wanting this game to be more like an RPG, you definitely can't fucking do that shit. No! They just throw waves of enemies at you. Now, even then, I know a lot of people are like, Lucas, you're not playing it right. Lucas, you're not, you're supposed to grapple. Lucas, you should do do Low key, I think that was probably the most intelligent thing he said this entire video. But yeah, haha, big funny voice changer in 2022. Lucas, you're not playing it right. Lucas, you're not, you're supposed to grapple. Lucas, you should do 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 Everybody wants to tell me how to play the game. Now, hold man, this is my first Halo game. Well, you know what? That explains a lot. I played it on Heroic, okay? Wow, dude, you beat that shit on Heroic? We need to bury this motherfucker in Arlington National Cemetery with the rest of the war heroes. Somebody get this man a fucking purple heart. I played it on Heroic, okay? That's why I played it, and I beat it. Oh my god, sign my tits. On Heroic, okay? And I beat it without upgrading my shield, without upgrading, I don't know, I don't even know what the other upgrades are besides the grapple hook. You don't need any of those because they're redundant. They're pointless, okay? I don't really know why this is a complaint. That sounds like good game design, if you ask me. Even in the time, once I discovered that there were other weapons on the bottom level, it was, it wasn't that difficult. And I won't even go over the checkpoints. For some reason, you can't determine when you want to save the game! Welcome to literally every single other first-person shooter campaign on planet Earth. Like, why is this even a complaint? Because if you were breezing through on Heroic, why the fuck did you even need a checkpoint? Okay, the game decides when you get to save. All right, so you could be in the middle of a boss fight. Name one other game, maybe other than like a Bethesda open world game that you can save in the middle of a fucking boss fight. You're like, you got in the boss fight, This his, half, his life is halfway down. You're like, okay, I, how about we save it here? Saving it right now would be a good time for me, the player. Or here's a great idea, Lucas. Don't fucking die in the middle of the boss fight and beat it without dying like every other boss fight in every other game. Which, funnily enough, Halo Infinite does have checkpoints in the final boss fight too, which makes this shit even fucking better. Even with checkpoints, he was getting his shit pushed in. Can we get a save here, bro? This is not quiet. Can we get a save here? This Where's is everyone? what they made me. What? 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 Bruh, did it not? F Halo. <laughs> Halo. Your fing save points are fing god tarted. Honestly, I think this is probably the first time I've ever heard someone bitch about the fact that they can't save whenever the fuck they want in the middle of a boss fight. Especially when that boss fight already has fucking checkpoints. Like, bro, there's nothing else to say at this point other than get fucking good, scrub. Your save points are fucking god tarted. I'm gonna use the rest. Man got so mad he had to go take a fucking shit. Game is like, no. F you and F your play style, okay? What the fuck is your play style? I die every three seconds, so I should be able to save that often as well? F everything about you, player. And I know, as an Xbox user, they're probably used to being F by Microsoft. I mean, I mean, what are they working with right now, okay? Bro, like, what the fuck was PlayStation working with last year? Ratchet and Jank, bro? All five hours of that? Like, at least Xbox got Forza Horizon 5 and Halo Infinite. PlayStation got fucking dog water last year. And I'm not really hyping up the lineup of either console because they've been pretty pathetic for the most part all around, but I don't really think it's a great idea to talk shit about Xbox's lineup when PlayStation had far worse. Hey. What, what, gunk? I mean, that's really uh, what Halo Infinite is on par with. Gunk. 
when it comes to the map, because you know they all want to jerk off about the map. Oh, the map size is so big. Oh, look how big the map size. I've watched a lot of reviews of Halo Infinite and almost never have I heard anyone mention the map size, but okay, sure. If anything, the map size is the one thing deterring me from playing the game because typically I don't really enjoy open world games anymore. Most developers just use an open world these days as a way to pad out the game and make it seem like it's longer than it really is. There is nothing to do in the map size, okay? Nothing. It's a barren. They have little locations where you help out other soldiers. You get these fobs. <laughs> what the fob? You have all these little side quests. And it's like, why? You're literally describing why I don't enjoy most of Sony's games, which I think is really fucking ironic. For what? So I can get another weapon? Why? <laughs> what? What do I need this weapon for? I don't even understand. Bro, it literally sounds like he's describing every single Sony open world game. Holy shit. For what? So I can get another weapon? Why? <laughs> what? What do I need this weapon for? I don't even understand. There's no reason for it. There is no reason for about 90% of the weapons. There's no reason to even upgrade besides your grappling hook. Yeah, this is literally the motherfucker that slobs on the knob of fucking Spider-Man on the PlayStation 5. You literally cannot make this shit up. And speaking of grappling hook, uh, hello, 2015 called, they want their gameplay mechanics back, all right? What's ironic is you're unironically a PlayStation 5 fanboy in 2022, so should you really be talking? Think about being an Xbox user in 2022 now and jerking off about a grappling hook. It's better than balancing mechanics and Death Stranding, which you motherfuckers were hyping up. I don't know, no game has ever been made worse by having a grappling hook. What? That's your new mechanic is a grappling hook? Yeah, because the story Lucas is about to describe, I think he can really relate to. <laughs> Lord, Lord. Lord, 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 Lord. And when it comes to the story, this is the only saving grace, it's the story. Now, from a PS5 user, I have no idea what the hell is going on. I mean, like most PlayStation 5 fanboys, they're not really too intelligent, so that kind of makes sense. They don't explain who Master Chief is. They don't explain as far as the blue girl. Yeah, because there's Halo 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and now Halo Infinite. Why the fuck would they waste everyone's time recapping the story and explaining everything like no one has ever played a Halo game before? You know, maybe before jumping into the sixth game in the Master Chief saga, try playing the other ones beforehand if you really want to understand the story. They don't explain the other blue girl. They don't explain the, 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 the mofos who look like monsters or whatever. Bro, I thought Halo Halo 4 Cortana was thick, but god damn. Oh, yeah. They don't explain as far as the blue girl. They don't explain the other blue girl. They don't explain the, 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 the mofos who look like monsters or whatever. They don't explain none of that, okay? This game is created for Xbox users. Yo, holy shit. Halo is created for Halo fans and Xbox users? I would have never fucking guessed. Like, what the fuck is this video, dude? I don't know, man. This review at this point might be worse than the other one we watched where the dude didn't even fucking download the game. This game is created for Halo users. Yo, holy shit. The sixth mainline entry in the Halo series is created for Halo users? What a fucking crazy idea. I don't know, man. It seems like the next thing he's going to tell us is sequels carry on a story. If you like Halo, then this is what this game is created for. No shit. Apparently, Halo users have been, I guess, I don't know, conditioned to mediocrity. So apparently because his pea brain can't understand the Halo story because he's never played any of the Halo games before, somehow we're conditioned to mediocrity. Interesting. I don't know, man. The one thing I'm kind of learning from this video is the amazing Lucas really doesn't seem that amazing. All the enemies look alike. So it's like, okay, this Banshee has red armor. Oh, but... He's, he's the, the, the leader of this Banshee with blue armor. Oh, and he's being controlled by this Banshee with, with purple armor. I'm like, what? This is the character design? That's right, dude. My favorite character in the Halo universe is a fucking Banshee. God, I love those motherfuckers. They all look alike. And then Master Chief, he... Listen. Dude, I really want to know what retarded shit he just cut out right there because you know if he removed it from the video, it had to be bad. Like, don't get me wrong, the rest of this video is fucking awful, but if he had to remove that from the video out of everything else he's talked about, you know it had to be good. The reason why I think this story is so great, and it's great from an Xbox user's perspective, because what this story is, 
It's a gay love story. And I'm sure Lucas can relate to that, especially given the fact that he is also an Xbox user as well. So I guess that means he can relate on two different levels. And I think that's great. It, it coincides with the release of nail polish for, for Xbox users. Kind of ironic that it's one of the biggest PlayStation fanboys on YouTube that ended up having nail polish on. What's it, gamers? Dreamcast guy here. <sighs> it's happened. You know what they say, man. Master Chief is one of the best self-insert characters in all of video games. And I think our boy Lucas is figuring that one out because he's definitely inserting his own experience into this shit. This whole entire time, he thought he had feelings for this Cortana chick, okay? Who's a blue AI, all right? Not even the C9000. It's literally a hologram, okay? That's what it is. Bro, if she's a hologram, then I'm a hologram. He is simping for this hologram, right? Because he's conflicted. But in your case, Lucas, you're not simping for a hologram. You're simping for a piece of plastic. So it's not really too different if you think about it. Once again, I'm telling you guys, he related to this on more than one level. Then there comes in this new blue chick, okay, which is dubbed the weapon. You know what, that's kind of an appropriate name because that ass is lethal. Then he starts thinking, you know what, I'm shutting off my feelings towards this new blue chick because of Cortana. Cortana meant a lot to me. And then but we're not, what we don't see is that this is a love triangle. I don't know, man. I kind of get the vibe that Lucas is an avid enjoyer of fan fiction type shit. Because now we have the Hispanic guy, Esperanza, we come to find out his name. Oh my God, shut the fuck up, that's a spoiler. Esperanza is the Hispanic dude who found him in the beginning of the game, all right? He's, he's just shifting, you know, floating in space and Esperanza's like, oh, look, it's a Spartan. Bro, this is literally the logic that the little degenerates on Twitter use when they ship their favorite anime characters. He goes and saves uh, Master Chief. What we come to later on discover is that Master Chief cuts off his connections, all right, cuts off his love to, to, to Cortana, cuts off his love to, to, to the blue chick, and he comes to find out that his true love is Esperanza, all right? And you know, they hug it out, you know, bro stuff and everything. But I don't know, man. I think Lucas is looking a little bit too much into this. I guess like he can relate to the fact that he cut off women from his life in pursuit of his one true male love, maybe? I don't know. And they go on and live their life, all right? Master Chief and Esperanza. So it's a beautiful love story in that concept is that Master Chief is finally coming out. Yeah, nothing screams I like dick in my ass like hugging the homies. Fuck everyone who had it. the art team, the animation team the character animation team, the sandbox animation team. You know, it really all makes sense now. The reason why he had such a mental breakdown in the end credit sequence of this game is he was jealous that Master Chief was finally able to do what he's wanted to do his entire life. And he's relaying his, you know, his homosexual desires with Esperanza. I think that's great. No shit. I think that's right, right in line with the audience. I'm sure many, many probably Xbox players cried when they discovered that. Sounds like it touched you very deeply as well. So in that respect, I can't deem the story that much, okay? Because it's a great love story that I think resonates with their audience, with the core of their audience. Now as a PS5 user, yeah, not so much. You know what, it's all coming together now. A very low IQ person. But nonetheless, this game is pointless. I don't know, man. Kind of sounds like this YouTube video to me, but fuck it. Here we are. Useless. All right. No sense in even playing it. If you're a PS5 owner, don't even think about playing Halo Infinite. Yeah, in all honesty, he's probably right. It probably has too much gameplay for you. Because what it will do, it'll send you into great, great depression. Knowing that you will never find a love as deep as Master Chiefs. All right. This is why most of the Xbox users are in a depressed state. Okay. If you notice, most of them, 90% of Xbox users, are actually taking antidepressants. And after playing this game, I now understand why. Bro, I don't know, the projection here just seems to be pretty fucking strong at this point. Anyways, guys, that's the video. Let me know what you guys think. Whether or not you believe Lucas, Lucas, you're just not good at it, okay? It's a skill problem, okay? That's why, Lucas, that's why you didn't enjoy it. Or if you didn't believe, yeah, okay, sure, sure, Jan. Either or, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to like, share, comment, subscribe. Oh, that fun stuff. Till next time, guys, be amazing. I wish I knew how to quit you.
And just like that, the video is over, guys. You know, this one was definitely a fun one to sit through, man. And this has to be one of the worst, if not the worst, Halo Infinite review on this wonderful website known as YouTube.com. You know, what was supposed to be a review of a video game turned into the amazing Lucas projecting his own fantasies about coming out of the closet into the self-insert character known as Master Chief. But you know what? All things considered, I'm glad that he was able to use video games as a means to express his true self and project what he truly wishes his own life could reflect. And you know what? That is the wonderful thing about video games, bro. They're not just video games. They're changing lives, just like fucking Darman, bro. But anyway, guys, that is gonna do it for this video today. If you did enjoy it, make sure to drop a like on it. I would greatly appreciate it. And as always, I wanna thank you all so much for taking the time out of your day to check out this video and for all the recent support as well. You guys are the fucking best, and I really do appreciate it. So with that said, I will catch you guys next time.